Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here, fellow at the Robert J. Dole Institute, best-selling author. Best book that's out right now is Race Pimping. You can get it at racepimping.com. And I want to talk about nationalism. I want to talk about make America great again. I want to talk about America first. I want to talk about conservatism, and I want to talk about it in the context of George Walker Bush, George W. Bush. He was in the news last week, did some sort of speech somewhere where he talked about the bigotry in America. America's got bigotry. Got some bigotry. We got to get rid of this bigotry. Bigotry, bigotry, bigotry. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of being lectured on bigotry, on diversity, on racism, etc. I'm sick of it. George Bush couldn't fill a thimble with his knowledge of bigotry, racism, sexism, etc. He couldn't fill a thimble. This guy lives in practical isolation from everything he talks about. What it shows you, when people mention bigotry, multiculturalism, all this other crap, these are people that are doing nothing but giving you back talking points. I, for one, am sick of it. He said talk of replacing nationalism with nativism. What exactly does that mean, replacing nationalism with nativism? I'm curious. Somebody tell me, look, I'm a native of America, which makes me an American national, which makes me proud of this country, which makes me, I, I have an affinity to this country. I don't cheer for other countries at the Olympics. I don't cheer for other countries in negotiations. I want the best deal for America. And you know what the best deal ends up being? You know what's funny about deals? People believe that if you feel like you got the best deal, the other guy can't feel like he got the best deal. Let's say you trade uh, an ounce of gold at worth $1,500 or whatever it is, or $1,300, an ounce of gold for $1,300 worth of a product that you're going to go make in your manufacturing process. The guy who got the gold feels like, I got over. Maybe the gold was worth 80 bucks more than he than he bar- bargained for. So he made a little money, you know, hundred dollars, whatever. The guy who got the products, he he feels like he got over because he's going. I've looked elsewhere and I would have paid fifteen hundred dollars for these products. And I only paid thirteen hundred. So everybody's happy. But the left believes if America puts itself first, then the country they're negotiating with can't feel happy. When we sell somebody, I don't know, whatever the product is, when we ship beef over to China, if they don't have beef, then I would think they're happy with the product. And we're happy to, to have the market and to have our, our uh, manufacturers or beef companies make money and keep the economy going. That's the way it works. You barter for a service or a product or whatever, and everybody feels like they've gotten the best deal. The left believes somebody in this transaction gets screwed. So what the guy takes his $1,300 worth of manufacturing product and he turns it into a grand of profit or so. That's what he would do for the most part. And what if he didn't? What if he just consumed it and it was an even trade and he felt good? What if he even lost a little bit? And he's okay with that because it was a learning process and he was, you know, he's going to do better the next time. Who knows? But these guys, it's a, an in some game. We can't be nationalist, you know, the way in the spirit of nationalism of old America. Oh, which old America are you pointing back to? Are you hearkening back to, George Bush? The 1960s America where black people couldn't feel that they were a part of the country because of the oppression of Democrats? What are you hearkening back to? See, I can hearken back to the spirit that founded this country. A, a bunch of people who said, you know what, King We don't have to pay attention to you anymore. You are now so much into our business than you're sitting over there on your throne doing nothing as we have to fight indigenous people, weather, try to grow crops and try to send you back taxes just because we're your quote subjects. Enough is enough. That was the spirit that founded this country. Enough is enough. You ever felt that about something? You ever felt that about an old girlfriend, or old boyfriend? You ever felt that about a friendship? You ever felt that about a job? You ever felt that about your politicians? It's not a new sensation. Enough is enough. America has sickened of the way that things were getting done under the old system. 
we've become worse than slaves of the king of England that we separated from. We are far worse off. He would he would look at the situation today and go, holy cow, I guess I could get a lot more out of those subjects. He'd look at us. He wouldn't even bother us. He'd give us free tea. He'd go, I'd get him in everything else. Marriage licenses, fishing licenses, licenses to do business, permits and occupancy permits. I'll just get him in parking tickets. <laughs> this dude would be looking at, at this is all the way we can make money. Joe boy, they'd be high-fiving in the, in, over at the castle, throwing parties every night, which is, by the way, what these leftists do. They take your money, they entertain, they throw parties, and then they pretend to give to each other's charity so that they look like they're good people. But I'll use Harvey Weinstein as an example. This guy is known as the pig in France. They knew him in, in the film festival Cannes, Cannes, whatever you want to call it, but it's pronounced Cannes. And it's, it's in an area of France. It's like the French Riviera. Beautiful place. And Harvey Weinstein would go over there every year. He gets stay at the Hotel de Cap, which is uh, on, on the outskirts of, uh, of Cannes. And, and he, would, um, he would rent out an amazing villa and practically take over the hotel. He'd host a big gala there. Every year they can count on Harvey Weinstein spending millions of dollars at their hotel. They host the event there and Harvey's over there molesting women left and right. The hotel st staffer said the guy thought he was God. They said he was smug, egotistical, you name it. And the chauffeurs that drove him knew that he was, dr you know, driving around underage girls and he's, you know, forcing them into situations they didn't like. They'd come out of there the next day crying and so on and so forth. And Hollywood pretends that they don't know anything about it. And to this moment, and I haven't heard anything that happened over the weekend, but I'll admit I wasn't looking. But as of right now, with all the rampant activity of this type that's in Hollywood, I've heard nothing of anybody else being outed. Nothing. I've heard of a, a fashion photographer being outed and a couple of other people unrelated to Hollywood, but the directors, nobody's outing them. Nobody's outing producers. Nobody's outing casting people. Nobody's outing anybody in Hollywood. Harvey's carrying the brunt as they still try to, you know, push uh, the, the blame elsewhere. All these heroes, all these courageous people. Finally, our Justice Department may be looking into this. But anyway, that's not what I want to talk. about. I, I want to talk about George Bush. You know, because I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm a proud nationalist. They're not going to make this a dirty word. Be a proud nationalist. Be a proud American. Make America first. America first. They are not going to ridicule us into obscurity again. Those days are over, George Bush, Barack Obama. You're not going to make us hate this country. And you know what? Many of the kids that are starting to come through this system are going, I don't get these people. They understand it. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.